What's up everyone, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids looking at the Spec Ops Global Monthly Subscription Box. This is the August 2016 box and let's open it up and see what's inside. Opening up the box here you can see we get a thank you note from Spec Ops Global and they also have a discount code on the back of this. If you want to buy some of the gear that you see in the box on their uh, website, they do some, sell some of the items in the different subscription box each, each month. They do sell them on their website. So uh, this is the August 2016 box. It is about jungle survival. As is the case with a lot of these subscription box uh, boxes, it's also true with Spec Ops Global. So there's different levels. The less you pay, the less gear you're going to get. The more you pay, the more gear you're going to get. So if it goes from Junior ROTC to New Recruit. And then on the back, you'll see it says Season Non-Com and then Elite. And it gives you a description of each of the items. So what I'll do is I'll basically go through and say, you know, at the Junior ROTC level, here's what you get. And then we'll go up to the next level. So first thing you're going to see is at the JROTC or Junior ROTC level, you're going to get a Light My Fire Fire Steel. And uh, this one ha is the 2.0 version. It has the integrated emergency whistle. And there is a note here. It says coconut shell waste. So it's made from coconut shell waste. You got your striker, you got the lanyard that keeps them together, and then you've got your actual fire steel. It does have some instructions on the back. I do like Light My Fire fire steels a lot. I've used um, some of them in the past. I actually have one of the Light My Fire knives from Mora, and that has been great as well. So uh, some fire steels, the quality is just better than others, but this one works really well. So definitely a thumbs up for the Light My Fire fire steel. Let's see what else we're getting in the Junior ROTC box. Next thing is a face veil, which I can see down here. This is made in Pakistan. And uh, here's what it says about it. It's uh, used by snipers and special forces, operators around the world. Provides a simple low-tech method for camouflaging yourself and your gear. So you can drape it over your head, you can drape it over your face, you can drape it over a weapon. Um, it's basically a way just to break up the outline uh, of your of your person and they also note that in hot weather it can provide shade or be soaked in water wrapped around your neck to cool you off so that's both those items the fire steel and the face veil are going to come in at the junior ROTC level those are your first two items for the new recruit level so that's the next step up you get a bush hat and this is from Israel and cool uh, cool hat uh, I was wearing it for a bit just to test it out quite cool um, the, it says the Rafle or Raffle, R-A-F-U-L, Bush Hat, uh, began being used by the Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, in the late 1970s, used primarily by, by infantry units within the IDF, uh, nicknamed after Raphael Eitan, E-I-T-A-N, a former chief of staff of the Israeli Defense Forces, um, and the Sahal, I think it is, T-Z-A-H-A-L, or acronym on the side, stands for Israeli Defense Forces. And you can wear the brim down, you can fold it up and snap it in. Um, cool little hat. I, I like boonie style hats. Sometimes you get them and they look huge. They look like a sun hat that you'd wear to the beach. Other times, um, if you get them made right, they're more like kind of like a bucket hat. And I think that's my preference, and that's what you're getting with this uh, bush hat. So that's at the next level. Also at the second level, the new recruit level, is the survival hammock. So we have this right here, a mini string hammock. And this is made in the UK by BCB. It's a British company. Um, they've got more than 200 NATO approved items and they have won multiple awards for soldier technology and innovation. So this thing can hold up to 265 pounds and they say it'll keep you comfortable whether you're trekking through dense jungle or lounging on the beach. So we're gonna set that up and show you what that looks like. Continuing on, the next level up is your season non-com. And if you take that, you're gonna get a boot knife. This is coming from Muella, M-U-E-L-A, the Muella Knife Company from Spain. And very compact little fixed blade. That's what that looks like. I was holding this before. It is, it's quite ergonomic. I mean, you're not gonna to wanna, to, you know, use this for some heavy duty tasks all day long, but it's definitely feels quite comfortable in the hand. Nice leather sheath. Snap that in place. It is a boot size or boot style knife, but it certainly has the uh, the sheath here with a pouch, so you can run that on your uh, run that on your belt. Nice to get a nice little knife. There's the box right there for what that looks like. Also at the season non-com level is a Sawyer Mini water filter. Great water filters. I mean, these things are well known. Um, there's you know some of the common ones out there: Life Straw, Sawyer. Uh, I think Renovo is another one of them. Uh, these are just, they're well known, they do a, a really good job. Let's just see what they say here um, as far as the details. Um, used by the US military, it's a mini water filtration system, great for a survival bag or a bug out bag. The system they note is pretty versatile, so there's different ways you can set it up. 
Um, it can be included in a collapsed drinking pouch, an inline a hydration pack. It could be on a standard soda bottle or simply use the included drinking straw to drink, drink directly from the water source. So you basically put the straw on, plug it into the water source, and then take a sip and you're good to go. There is the, uh, the hydration pouch in there as well, which is a plus. And the last item we're going to show you is a backpack, and we're going to actually head outside to show you what that looks like. Last up here we have a rucksack. This is the Polish WZ97 and Spec Ops Global notes that this is a favorite amongst the 12th Mechanized Infantry Brigade over there in Poland. This uh, bag is 85 liters, so lots of capacity, a bunch of different pockets. Let me show you some of the different ways you can store gear in this actual bag. So 85 liters total capacity, you have one, two, three external large size pockets, and then you have these two snaps which will get you into the main section of the bag. You can see there's lots of straps all over so you can attach gear in a variety of different ways to the pack. Moving down to the bottom here you can unsnap these and put a bedroll or a thermorest, something like that in there. And then I also want to show you down here on the bottom this whole section is zippered so you can access the bottom of the pack, a sleeping bag, maybe you keep some extra um, food in there, something like that. There's plenty of ways to access the actual different compartments of the pack. Flipping it over to this side, um, there is no big external frame, so you're going to save weight there. Nicely padded shoulder straps. You got your sternum strap here, fully adjustable, and then there is a waist strap as well. Here's a quick look at the pack actually on me. And once again, I'll tell you that lots of straps, lots of different ways to attach gear to this bag. Couple parting thoughts here. Uh, first off, I want to mention once again this is the August 2016 Jungle Survival Box from Spec Ops Global. Uh, links down below if you want to head over to Spec Ops Global and find out about the subscription process. And also, if you like particular pieces of gear, you can head over to their website and or contact them and let them know what you're interested in. See if you can actually purchase some of these individual pieces of gear for yourself. I think I'm gonna actually get another one of these hats that I like them so much. Secondly, the Everyday Tactical Vids channel is about to hit 100,000 subscribers, so I want to say thank you so much to you guys for watching the videos, commenting, being engaged in the Everyday Tactical Vids community. Just a huge blessing to me. I love the work that I get to do, um, shooting the videos, working with different companies, and most of all, interacting with you guys who are checking out the videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you again for that. Uh, the other thing I'll tell you is that I'm going to partner up with Spec Ops Global to see um, to get you guys some products. Once we cross 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, we're gonna do a bunch of different giveaways with a bunch of different companies and Spec Ops Global is gonna jump on board with that. As I always like to say, thanks for watching the videos. If you haven't subscribed to Everyday Tactical Vids, just click that little subscribe button uh, down below this video and you can uh, join in to being part of the Everyday Tactical Vids community. As always, more videos coming soon. Take care. This is the ReadyMan EDC self-defense tool and you can see you got that big hole there. Basically, you're gonna put your hand through there and now you got this point. Now it's not a point like for piercing, but it's definitely gonna let somebody know you mean business uh, if, you, if you're gonna strike somebody with that. And then also this end, you could certainly use that as a tool, a self-defense tool. You could also use this to break a window, that's the concept at least. So you're probably gonna choke back, choke back a little bit or have gloves on and then striking in various spots on a window. The idea is that you can break, uh, break through the window. There is a little loop here and I'm gonna put my keys on here, my keychain, just so you can see it's really easy to do. And then I'll give you one recommendation, or basically give Ready Man a recommendation. So that sits like that. So basically, it can be a keychain as well. Now, the problem for me is if I have it like this, I got these keys flopping all over the place. So, Ready Man, if you're watching, what I would do is I would take that hole, extend some of the metal down here, and put it down there. So, you know, it's basically not flopping around up here, but it's down below your, below the bottom part of your hand there. And if I had to really use it, the keys aren't going to come all the way up too far. So that's where I would do it, make a change. I did carry this as a, you know, use it as a keychain for a handful of days, and it worked fine. This thing is aluminum, so it's super lightweight. But uh, that's a self-defense tool from ReadyMan that came in last month's Spec Ops Global Box.